a lot. Correct, correct. And we'll come back to that later. In fact, we'll, we, what, what, what will we do when that's constant returns the scale? No, but what are we going to do as, e as economists if we want to say, well, why not constant returns to scale? Right? Because you're right. In order for this to have a meaningful solution, it has to be when I go to the second stage, I get a picture that looks like this. I get, I get rising marginal cost. Because if I had flat marginal cost, then these, it's not going to cross. Or if I had declining marginal cost, it's going to be a minimum, not a maximum. Right? So I'm going to need some kind of rising cost. Well, we might as well talk about that. Why do costs go up? Why are there diminishing returns to scale, like you said? Why can't I, if I want to produce twice as much output, just use twice as much inputs? Well, but let's let's take a take a problem that doesn't have land, right? A lot of firms don't use could get more land, right? That is, what well, so what is it? Any ideas? Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's I think you're down you're 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 running in the right direction. That is this idea that all I need to do to produce twice as much output is just do twice as much of what I'm doing ignores the fact that, you know, that there's something that goes awry when you try to do that. And there's a number of things that can go awry. One is it can be difficult to actually replicate what you have, that you've kind of put a team of workers together, for example, and maybe there aren't another set of workers just like those, right? That's kind of like the Robinson Crusoe problem we had. He had these two plots of land, and they weren't the same. You couldn't just find another plot just like plot A if we wanted to produce more of what plot A had a comparative advantage at. Now, that tends to apply, though, more at an economy level than it would at an individual level. For Robinson Crusoe, of course, there was no distinction between the economy and the individual. So one would be you just can't find them. Another answer is they're out there, and, but finding them is hard. You know, you happen to have found these guys, and finding the, the people you would need to replicate it or all the inputs you would need to replicate it. Another way to think about it is, well, it's true, at the end of the day, I could duplicate it if, once I found every, all the inputs that duplicated the ones I had. But what do I do in the interim while I'm looking for them, right? I don't find them all at the same time. You know, you have to put in some time dimension of, of diminishing returns. And empirically, I think that's an important one. That is, diminishing returns are important in the long run, but they're going to be particularly important in the short run if you try to grow too fast. That is, anybody who runs an actual firm is going to run, realizes you run into problems when you try to grow too fast. Because you're not necessarily going to be able to find quickly all the inputs that replicate what you have. The team you put together isn't going to quite mesh the same way the last team did. And the more teams you're trying to put together, the harder it is. The second one, the, uh, another one is, once you assembled the second team, I now have a different problem. I now got two teams. I got all the same ones I had before, and I got all these new ones. Well, somebody's got to manage all that stuff. So maybe you need another layer on top of that, right? This is the kind of management problem that I need. And, and, and that can create its own set of issues. And I think there's a final one. And I'll throw this out there, even though I don't think it's ever really been kind of put out in a, in a completely coherent way. But I think it's actually a really useful way to think about the world is one of the reasons why there are diminishing returns is related to the fact that it's hard to articulate why there are diminishing returns. Right? Do people understand where I'm going with this? Let me give you an analogy, okay? See, the, the, 
You ever heard somebody makes, makes I th- maybe I've said this already, in this, did people can't solve their own problems? Did I mention that? There's this old saying, and people used to say, well, pe- some people, people are really good at solving other people's problems, but they're not good at solving their own. <laughs> you guys have heard that, right? That's a common allegory. Al- and if you think about it as an economist, you'd say, of course. That's an equilibrium condition, right? If I could solve my problems, I wouldn't have them, right? <laughs> right? So by definition, I can't solve my own problems. That's the definition of my problems. They're the ones I can't solve. So you shouldn't be surprised at all that I'm really good at solving your problems, but I can't solve my own. People understand that? It, it's, it's like, once you think about it, right, it's like an equilibrium condition. It's not like a surprise. It has to be true. Well, the same kind of problem happens here. And this is what happens with a firm grows. As a firm grows and it tries to get bigger, there's some new things it has to do. But it doesn't really know which ones it has to do and which one it doesn't have to do. So you don't know where the problems are going to show up. So now you have two, two potential solutions. One is try to solve problems that aren't really there, which is costly, or not solve some of the problems that really are there, which is also costly. So I, I think one of the reasons they're diminishing returns is really you're not quite sure what those additional things are that are going to come up. Where are the incentive problems going to show up? when I try to replicate that second team, is which aspects of behavior am I going to have to try to monitor or improve on? And I think that element of uncertainty, which is not unrelated to what we talked about before in terms of putting the team together, is part of the story as well. And I think one of the things we have to realize that the existence, at least at some level, in many activities of decreasing returns is a reality even if we don't completely understand where it comes from, okay? It is in a sense, I think it is in a sense, and somehow our ability to overcome that, I think, is is partly related to we don't know where it's coming from. We kind of don't know where the problems are going to show up, you know? Any, any questions that people have? You know, so that, I think that's part of the story. But anyways, so, but this kind of unconditional factor demand definitely requires some notion of diminishing returns. You have to have rising marginal costs, otherwise you can't explain why the firm just doesn't continue to expand. You have to have marginal costs rising with output, and that's a form of diminishing returns.